Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave with Zach Ratting. Hey. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Um, I've got a treat for you today. You always have the best <laughs> So uh, I check Craigslist every weekend uh, for garage sales and estate sales. And nine, 20 times out of 21, I find nothing. But yeah. this last weekend, it was a mini lathe. And I was like, I mean, oh, I got to go there. Yeah, cool. So I go down there. The mini lathe's already gone. So is the good diamond polishing wheel, sadly. Uh, Darn it. Yeah. Uh, but for five bucks, I picked up this lunchbox that is in my opinion, clearly an RC and remote controller, but from, from a long time from ago. A long time ago. <laughs> this is somebody's project. Clearly. And I wanted just to look through it with you. Sure. I noticed a um, pulse width. Yeah. That apparently you, you can, can adjust. adjust the. Well, I mean, on like old servos, you know, the original um, hobby servos back in the the RC airplane days when you had motor, yeah. you know, gas motors and whatnot. Um, I mean, and even modern ones, they use something called PPM, which is pulse. Uh, is it? I don't remember what the exact yeah. letters are. But anyways, it's changing the the length of the pulse right. to adjust the servo position. So, I I remember doing that with a crystal in my radio, yeah, not yeah. with a dial. So I wanted to open this up and sort of surmise a bit about how old it might be. Yeah. Um, I see off and throttle. I mean, the rust gives you some, uh, and the color of the lunchbox gives you some indication of how old it is. It but. also, I must say, I'm curious about this lunchbox because these two those, holes, those look those factory are, made yeah. to me. Those are not aftermarket. So did this lunchbox just have a... Have a vent? Yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm mis curious. It's mis mistress. Mysterious. Oh, look yeah. at this. Um, oh. I want, oh, oh that smell. Some... I wish I could give you this smell. <laughs> this is like all of my earliest memories are smelling. It's, it smells like your grandfather's house. Yeah, it's like cosmoline and preservative oil. Mm. Um, this, uh, oh, an edge, yeah, so edge connector cards. So back, if you remember, um, you know, the Atari, not yeah. Atari, I'm sorry, well, Atari, and then, you know, anything that had the original cartridges, and then and all the old, on, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what was inside of this. Yeah. Um, and then the old Apple II, it used to have expansion cards and they would have these edge connectors on there. And it was just a cheap way of making a multi, you know, connector. Uh, so what did this thing do? What is this card for? Is that well, a transmitter? Is, mm, I mean, you have just a bunch of, these are just standard resistors. Right. And then you've got some capacitors. Um, these are all capacitors. And then these are uh, mm -hmm. probably just, uh, these are just transistors. Okay. Um, so I'm guessing this is just a transistor switch uh, card. Okay. And you know these are the biasing resistors. I mean, it may be amplifying something, but it's hard to tell. And then there's, I don't. I don't oh, and there's a second. I actually only just realized tiny. that there's a second one. Yeah. And this one faces up. And uh, well, so this, this one, one has... this one's got some potentiometers mm -hmm. on there again. Yeah. So this tells me that it's this is probably acting as an amplifier. So they have them in a. In, a li in their linear range, these transistors, and they're okay. they're basically uh, biasing the transistors to do some kind of amplification. Um, Which it might be a radio amplification. It could be radio, it could be, uh, you know, so like a linear motor control. Mm -hmm. I saw something on the side here that kind of gave me sort of motor output. It says output. Yeah. Um, but blocks common, it's a little <laughs> mysterious. Um, and then we've got, uh, I, I'm also curious about the two lights in here. Uh, I see, I see, yeah, I see a little tiny, this yes. might be, this might be a little uh, neon bulb I, in, in here as a, a debugging tool to see if you've got power or not. Um, I'm gonna guess this is probably high voltage, so. It does. There's nothing here that says what voltage it might have taken. I mean, but we can we can look up these these other transistors on here. I well, these actually this is a uh, can't tell if this is a diode or a transistor. Some, uh, I think some I of looked those. it up. Hold on, just a second. Uh, I got a result on it right away. Yeah. Uh, Delco two uh, N five five four. Uh, NP germanium yeah. transistor. Germanium, yeah, th that's an old transistor. <laughs> <laughs> so, Single so yeah, pole. this is these these are big beefy beefy transistors. Um, they're on a heatsink, so you know they're definitely putting some real power through them. Um, and that's another. This is a wire wound wire wound resistor. So it's they're usually pretty low uh, resistance, mm -hmm. but they can handle a lot of current. So I'm just curious about I I. I 
everything about this says to me it's a, it's from old RC equipment potentially. Potentially. But I, I'm curious about where the transmission happens. Well, I don't know that this is actually RF. Right. In fact, I don't think it is. I think you might be doing pulse width modulation of a motor. Oh, instead of right. That's why you have output, input, and output. Yeah. So these are. I think this is just a screw terminal, like like a old. Yeah. These yep. are. You put your wire around this, and you you tighten so it on here. So this is all about controlling a motor. Yeah. Forward, reverse, throttle. Yeah. So this is this is actually a pulse width modulation uh, motor controller. Pulse normal. Yeah, I, I think I think this was a manual drive for some kind of either a machine tool, which it very well could be if they're selling a lathe and a grinder wow. or things like that. Oh my god! So yeah, if you want to so do this, some, could take it might take house power. It might take 110. It's hard to know um, exactly what it is. Start voltage, max speed. So yeah, they have some external. Yeah. Um, probably control boxes that they'd plug in here. No, yeah. it's not. These are just pots. Look. Oh. Oh, I it's know. A pot. I thought they were quarter inch jacks. It looks like too. A, it totally looks and like then I saw jacks. this, and I'm like, I've never seen that. How does? It? And then I saw the little screw. It's a. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So yeah. So, I, I think just just guessing, this was like a original um, power feed, maybe like like you have on the, on on your uh, like a cross feed for a cross your, feed for what? the mill. What? Uh, it could also be dr driving the motor for a lathe, like if you want to do electric speed control instead of gearing. Right. That's what this oh, seems like man. to me. So, I, I so now of course, well, I think what we'll do is, you know, we'll put this video up, and I'm sure there's some people who have some ideas about this, I but imagine. I'd specifically love to go find the right motor and see if it actually works. And actually, and because it everything looks in pretty great shape in here. Well, you can you can test all the transistors. You can mm -hmm, do that with mm -hmm. a with a multimeter. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's not much to go wrong. So the things that the things that die, well, old if they're electrolytic capacitors, and I see a couple of those in here. That's electrolytic. Right. Um, uh, no, I don't know what that yeah. one is. That one's cardboard. Uh, it might also be electrolytic. Just twenty five volts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thousand microfarads. Yeah, that's probably electrolytic too. Um, nothing in here really dies. You've got, you've got like, <laughs> you've got like, there's a diode here. Well, now this one in intrigues me because this says off and throttle. Mm -hmm. It's just a detent potentiometer. Yeah, but what, 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 what for? Why? I'm um, curious about. Oh wait, yeah. release cap, a apl uh, lap, apply. Oh lap, lap. So is this your diamond polisher? Is this the speed, since it has a lap on there, like you would use for I was lapping? thinking of lap like lap time. Oh. Not necessarily diamond lapping. Uh, these are all, these are all <laughs> mysteries. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> release, apply, release, apply. Wait, lap, like, like if it squirts out material, like, like would there be a pump? Would this be like for pumping? Also, by the way, it's just, it, it stays at release, but springs back yeah, from the Yeah, I think, I think that might just be old. Oh, okay. <laughs> if I had to guess, it's it's just gotten a little gummed up. Oh, fair, fair, but yes. But apply, it, it is just a, it's a... Oh, no, actually, this is bent outwards for a capture, and that one isn't, and it doesn't. Oh, no, you're right, you're right. Amazingly, I didn't realize that, that, that you that, could add a fin to that to create... <laughs> <laughs> to, make it, to make it stable in yeah. one side. But well, these are adjustable parameters. I mean, again, I, yeah, every time we think that the 1960s are primitive, I come back to things like this of like these beautiful, simple little. Yeah, and like you, you would, ne yeah, just like you could clean this switch. There are no switches that you buy now that are like cleanable. No, they're, you they're, can spray your stuff in there yeah, and hope. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. You spray your contact cleaner. Yeah. So, so this is, yeah, this is just like a, this is a selector. Um, and I'm just not, curious actually, what it would select for. It's just, I think it's it's selecting oh, each, speed which, ranges maybe? Well, which one of the resistors that you're using to probably oh. do either PWM or um, the frequency of the PWM. Oh, right. Could, I mean, it could be a number of different right, parameters. Right. But yeah, I don't see anything, There, there's nothing that says radio in this. In no. fact, I don't, I don't That's see. That's where I was confused. Yeah. Because it felt like a piece of radio equipment you would without have, a transmitter. You'd have a crystal, you'd have inductors. Yes, um, yeah. Things like that. But yeah, no, I think this is just a motor controller, but a really, really cool motor controller. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, so good. Yeah, no, I know all the, all, all the little 
writing, all the little. I mean, this actually looks like your handwriting. No, I know. That's what's I kind write of... in white on stuff. That's it like really my does. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if it still works. And I I don't know about you, but like for me, this open question of finding something like this and looking inside of it is the origin of my whole life. Oh yeah, right? this it's is how literally it, like the like, curiosity of how does that work? Why why is this? Who made it? What is it? Yeah. Well, and it is it's it's archaeology too, right? Like you're, yes, it's it's absolutely like a, a snapshot of history of like this is how people built things in a particular era. I mean. You said 60s, probably? Like, I, that seems I'm now, right. Now I'm actually guessing that there's probably, if I really was able to find it, a magazine article that was a guide on how to build this. Because this was probably not the first one of these that somebody made. Exactly. This feels like a real project box. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that's it's worth going through a motor control. I'm just going to start looking at mid-century motor control or popular mechanics articles yeah, and things. Yeah, No, this is really cool. Dude, thank you so much. You're I, welcome. Your, your expertise was critical for my understanding of how the electronics might work. I mean, I, I did my best. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you guys for joining us. There's nothing to do this. Just a show and tell. A show and tell with company. That's yeah. a first Yeah, here. there you go. Thank you, sir. It was my pleasure. See you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. We have some brand new merch to tell you about because while life is full of unsolvable puzzles, we are going to sell you a solvable puzzle. We have three puzzle sizes now available at adamsavage.com. 120 piece, 240 piece, and this 16 by 20, 500 piece puzzle of my cave. Yes, I gotta tell you, I can't wait to actually try this out. Again, you can buy this right now at adamsavage.com.